Hi, am I on the air? Yep. Fuck. Thanks. I've been in the danger zone. <laughs> we got a bad My five stars. Man, it's Mungo. Huh? Yeah, my five. We got a do that. Well, what is going down, everybody? Welcome to a special edition of Am I Still on the Air? Of course, you know it as the spinoff show of Am I on the Air, where we t- usually grab a topic and we run it down. We've done summer movie countdowns, we've done spoiler reviews. Tonight, I'm very excited, because it has been, if you're a comic book movie lover, this week has been insane in the news department. Uh, Just yesterday, um, Marvel released, actually it was Monday, Monday Marvel dropped the big bombshell that Robert Downey Jr. is going to be joining Captain America 3, and that we could be heading towards this Civil War storyline. So this is ginormous news in the world of Marvel. Well, today, DC has decided to one-up them and announce their entire comic book movie slate from now through 2020. (laughs) So there is a lot to go into. And I figured, you know what? Once this DC slate dropped, I said, it's time to assemble the team. And we need to break this thing down because this is such big news for any Marvel and DC fans. So there's a ton to get through, uh, obviously on the Marvel side, discussing what could Robert Downey Jr. be doing in, Iron- in Captain America 3. How can a civil war be on the big screen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? You know, well, how does this aff- phase the Marvel Cinematic Universe moving forward? And of course, on the DC side of things, talking about where everything's slated, what's coming, what's not maybe coming, (laughs) and any surprises in between. So once all this news dropped, I said, you know what, I can't wait to my next MI on the air to talk about this. I had to get everybody together, and we're going to break it down. So I'm happy to have Geeky Pat from This Week with the Geek. I got Peeps from the People's Forum. And for the first time ever on Am I Still on the Air and Am I on the Air programming, uh, Fred, a.k.a. Lobster Johnson, is here. You've heard him before when we did the comic book series and everything. So I'm glad to have all these guys on because we can really break this thing down now. So welcome, guys, to the show. Aw, yeah. Oh, that's your line. (laughs) What up, Geek Nation? Howdy, everybody. Thanks for having us on, Don. And when he says assemble, he literally blew the seashell, and we all came running. So thank you, because you're right. We got to get down to the nitty gritty on this. Yeah, I mean this is big. I mean the, the the Marvel news alone was big, big news, and then DC dropping six years worth of content today took it to a whole nother level, and it was just like holy crap. We got to get everybody together. We got to talk this thing through. So. Let's get into it. Let's start with Marvel. Well, you know, since the news dropped first Monday with Marvel, uh, we got to get into it. So last week, Robert Downey Jr. was causing waves because he was on the Ellen show, and Ellen said, so you're going to do an Iron Man 4? And he was like, eh, I don't know, maybe. And she's like, so that's a yes, ain't it? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. So <laughs> everybody was like, oh, shit, Robert Downey's doing Iron Man 4. This is going to be tight. And then he was on David Letterman that same night, and David Letterman asked him straight up, hey, are you going to do an Iron Man 4? And he was like, nah, not really. So he kind of backtracked a little bit, and he said, but, you know, I'm still working with Marvel, and we're, we're trying to do some things, and we're putting some stuff together, and we got some projects on the horizon that we're working with. So he kind of left the door open, and was like, okay, cool, I wonder what kind of projects they could be doing. And uh, then... Boom, this news drops. Robert Downey Jr. in final negotiations to join Captain America 3. And then hence, the floodgates open as this will lead Marvel down the Civil War storyline. So, before we get into how this can affect the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, who wants to step up and really explain the Civil War comic book storyline? Who's the best at that one? I think it would either be 
Okay, I'll take it, peeps. Let's do this. All right, peeps. So tell us, from a comic book standpoint, remember, we'll get to how the cinematic universe might take it, but from a comic book standpoint, this is a big comic story arc that I believe came out in, like, 2006. And, I mean, I thought this, and I haven't read the comics in a long time. Civil War is ginormous. So tell us, what really consisted of Civil War? Right on. And uh, let me also add that at this point, um, you know, I was... I had already gone through, you know, my early 20s, so at that point I was going through this metamorphosis where I kind of got out of comic books. And I was like, you know what, there's nothing really happening in the comic book world anymore. Maybe it is for kids. So I, th- I just kind of left it alone. And, you know, these movies started coming out, and it just it, it sparked this interest that I had. So I went to the comic book shop, and I asked them, is there anything good? And they said, yes, you got to pick up Civil War. And so this Civil War, it actually got me back into comics. I was out of it for, I would say, like five, six years. But reading this event just, oh, it, 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 it just gave me all those, those warm, bubbly feelings. So let me go ahead and just kind of break it down. And Fred um, and Pat, please correct me if I, if I do anything wrong. But um, it kind of starts where... Um, it is a group of uh, mutants, I think they are, and they're called the New Warriors. And they're just like a, a bunch of young teenagers that are doing a reality TV show. And on this reality TV show, they're like, hey, we've tracked down the supervillains. They're all hanging out in this house, and I guess the, the supervillains are all, there's like uh, four or five of them, and they're all living together in this house. And the, uh, the kids, um, led by this guy named Speedball, says, hey, you know, we're going we're gonna to go shut these guys down. They have no idea what's about, what's about to come their way. So they rush through, they jump through the, the windows, they break in their house, and they start beating up these supervillains. Um, there's a supervillain, his name is Nitro. Um, he, he has the ability to just basically blow himself up. And by, by them doing this, Nitro, he kind of makes the comment, well, you guys are messing with the big boys and you're going to see what's going to happen. So he blows himself up and literally destroys like the entire, um, I, think it, I think they're in Stanford. So he, he, enjoy, he destroys a, a huge part of Stanford. I think about 600 people are reported dead. And this, is, this basically starts the, the, um, the conversation that, you know, with superheroes running around doing whatever they want to do, whenever they want to do, we, government needs to step in and control this. And um, then that's pretty much where, I mean, Don, you kind of said in your show where, you know, Tony Stark kind of comes off as the bad guy because Tony Stark agrees. He thinks that, you know, superheroes should register themselves with the government and go through training so that they can all become professional and it'll be organized instead of a bunch of people just going out there and being vigilantes. And Mr. Captain America is on the other side where he's like, well, actually that's kind of taking away civil rights. You know, you don't take away our guns. And, you know, so Captain America is on the other end of it. Um, and that basically, um, yeah, I'm, obviously I'm, I'm skipping over, but that basically starts the civil war. Tony Stark wants the, wants the registration and uh, Captain America is against it. And there's a bunch of heroes that back Tony Stark, and there's a bunch of heroes that back Captain America. Um, Fred, uh, Pat, you got anything y'all need to add to that, or how does that? How's that? Well, you know, I think you uh, gave a really good brief description of of what covers it. Um, that's the essential point of Civil War within the comic books, and and kind of creating those dividing lines uh, between um, you know Tony Stark's camp and and Captain America's camp. What, what's interesting is there's also you know, which won't be covered in the movies because of um, a lot of the uh, splits with the different uh, movie companies. But like the X Men, for example, like during this process, they're kind of like, you know what, we got our own problems, so you guys do whatever the heck you want to do. We're gonna go deal with our own stuff, and they kind of yeah. like say, let let's let leave us out of it. Yeah, and Spider Man was kind of in that middle ground. And then eventually, you know, he picks a side, and that was like a big moment in in the uh, in the series. And I think that you know, with a lot of the talks of of Marvel tr- Marvel trying to acquire Spider Man, that could be, play a big role in the Civil War stuff. Right on, right on. Now, Pat, I know he shares a different view on Civil War. He actually doesn't care for the Civil War storyline very much. So, what is it about this storyline that you don't like, and why why would you not want this to happen? 
Well, on paper, it should work. Uh, if you look at it as a long-going story arc, I mean, it's a great allegor- uh, for, um, it's allegoric for, like, the, you know, the registration acts that we have now. You know, um, <clears throat> definitely the Patriot Act, things in the wake of 9-11. It had all that in there. It had all these things that should have been really great. The problem was the implementation, the imp- bleh, applying it to in, in practical use. So I'm reading a comic book where it wasn't just heroes picked one side and heroes picked another side. At one point, they released supervillains, and other supervillains joined uh, t- side with St- Tony Stark. It got to the point where the characters were no longer the characters I knew. They didn't act like the characters would have acted. They shouldn't. They didn't. They weren't. They weren't who they were supposed to be. I mean, there was a point where Sue and Reed break up over this, over politics. They just break up. They just. That's it. I'm on one side. You're on the other. And Mister Fantastic is not phased at all that the love of his life is walking away. He kind of played up a little bit. But it doesn't phase that at all. And then you have heroes acting like villains. Heroes killing each other and villains killing each other. And 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 it was just brutal. And the whole thing just... It was, he, Sean got back into comic books for this. I walked away from Marvel um, pretty much forever since this happened. I haven't bought a Marvel comic book since then. And not that I haven't read them. I mean, I re- read through a lot of people's stash. But this really hurt Marvel's brand for me. Um, it took a lot of convincing. You can ask Sean. It took a lot of convincing for me to come back to read these characters. I just didn't think that the things that were going on, although they were great stories, um, they just weren't the characters that I fell in love with my whole childhood. They just weren't the stories that I needed to see or hear. There has to be a definite good and evil. There has to be, you're a good guy. There has to be a limit that someone's willing to go before they're not the person they were anymore. And it was like willy-nilly. It was like, oh, we're just going to brutally rape, kill this 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 character, the, the cat girl, I can't remember her name off the top of my head right now. Um, you know, oh, we're going to act this way. I'm going to let, I'm, I'm going to, let S.H.I.E.L.D. be taken over by the Green Goblin. Um, these things just didn't make sense to me anymore. It didn't seem like they were even trying to make it plausible. They were just trying to be over the top. And I, I felt like Image failed when they tried to do that, and, and Marvel failed for me in that aspect. It, it wasn't mature. It was just irresponsible. I think they wanted to come off mature, but that's just not how it came off for me. So I walked away. You know, that's interesting. I, I uh, wanted to also mention that, like, I was reading X-Men at the time that Civil War happened, but I wasn't reading Avengers, Iron Man, Spider-Man, stuff like that. So I actually completely missed Civil War because I wasn't interested in it. And, um, you know, I went back and, and later read it. And it's not one of my favorite stories. Um, I can see definitely because of, you know, its impact in the, in the comic community, like, you know, why they would want to make a movie out of it and stuff. But, you know, you're talking about including villains. And, and the, the main thing I remember of Civil War is, like, there's some villains hanging out with Captain America and stuff. Punisher walks in the room and blows their head off. Yeah, and, and Cap like starts punching him, and he's like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "I'm not going to fight you, Cap. I respect you." He's like, "But those were villains," and you know, and those are the kind of things that I remember from from Civil War. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how this goes into the in the cinematic universe because there's you know a lot of differences with the cinematic universe to the comic book at this point. It, it was plagued with with other things too, delays and stuff like that, and and I felt like they started to branch it out past the seven comic books it was supposed to be. And correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, you would, or maybe even Fred, but uh, mostly Sean. I know he was really into it. That it 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 it, it really just kind of bled over into other comics, didn't it? Oh yeah, they they had spinoffs off spinoffs, so I, I couldn't keep track of them. There was the, you know, Civil War Spider-Man, Civil War Fantastic Four. and it, I mean, very interesting if you like those characters, because you get to see what, you know, they even had a Civil War X-Men. You get to see what the X-Men were doing during the Civil War, what Wolverine was doing, even though, you know, they played that neutral role. There were some X-Men that, that did jump into the, that chose a side, but, it you know, it, those, it, as long as you read the core magazine, you were good. But there are a lot of arcs out there that if you don't read the side 
stories and the core arc won't make as much sense as it should. And that I, I don't like. Yeah, it was written by Mark Miller, and so I, I kind of expected more than what I got, but I don't know how much Mark Miller's writing was um, hindered, maybe, by the upper management, you know? Um, the seven comic books were written by Mark Miller anyway, not not all of them. Um, not the spin-off ones. And Steve McNiven did the art, which was outstanding. The art was outstanding. I mean, but there was even a point where, where, where Iron Man and Captain America fight and kill, well, supposedly kill Captain America. He comes back later, but, you know, and I, I'm wondering how much of Brian Michael Bendez, it's, his name's all over this stuff, you know. I want more gore. I want more violence. I want more anger. And Mark Miller, it's just not, I, I mean, he wrote some great comic books. Uncanny X-Men, New Frontiers. I mean, Superman the Red Sun, remember that? Uh Ultimates, Ultimate Fantastic Four, Wolverine the Old Lo- Man Logan, Wanted, Kick-Ass, Secret Service. I mean, he wrote all these great comic books. This just wasn't written well. I mean, the but characters it, weren't characters. But I, I get that, but I, I just kind of liked it because it, 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 re- it, drew the, it drew a line, and it really made you kind of question what side are you on? Like, are you on Captain America's side because you like the majority of the characters on his side? Or do you like Captain America because what he's standing for? And what Captain America's standing for, you know, the you know freedom of registration, is that even the right choice? You know, it, it kind of added that political type of, um, you know, as you said, like, it, it was more of an adult um, comic book. You know, it, it had a lot of the, you know, like, and even, like, you know, Civil War and all, like, the American Civil War. It's, I don't know. It just, you're right. Like, even when, when he added villains into the mix that was you know that's not the best i thing to do but when you're trying to win a war you know you're gonna grab whoever you can and they 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 had a chip in their head so that if they didn't do what they're supposed to their heads heads explode so i don't know yeah yeah because that's that's exactly how most of the superheroes would have handled that situation too i think it'd been dead a long time ago but my whole thing hold on hold on i gotta cut it here Okay, we, we need to <laughs> reel in, or this is going to be another five-hour episode. <laughs> Remember, this isn't really about the comic book. We're 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 focusing on the cinematic universe, so I don't want to spend choo, too choo, much choo. time just breaking down the pages of all of these issues and everything. So we just wanted the gist of what the story was <laughs> and how it kind of came to be, and now how will this translate into the MCU? This is the bigger question, you know, is how how does Marvel take something like that to where, like you said, they don't have all the key players. We don't have the X-Men, we don't have the Fantastic Four, we don't have Spider-Man, you know, and, and how do we bring this together uh, and make it make it pop? May, you know, may, give it the justice that it is for the people that are fans of this on paper. Um, so, I have a couple ideas. Um... One being that this is obviously going to, you're, you're going to start to see this hinted at, at the end of Age of Ultron, of Avengers 2. That basically, from what I'm hearing, at the end of Age of Ultron, Tony Stark pretty much retires as Iron Man, because uh, he feels guilty about creating Ultron, and, and, and the damage and the destruction that Ultron has caused. And from what I'm guessing, if you base it off that ending... If you lead into Cap 3, you know, you already have Cap not trusting the government <laughs> because of what happened in Winter Soldier and Hydra and all that yeah. whole nine, you know. So then you have you have Tony Stark come into Captain 3 as really just Tony, speaking to her anymore, I'm not Iron Man, and we really need to, you know, they, I don't know if it'll be that straight up kind of same registration, but like he's going to come up with something. And obviously, Cap and him will butt heads, and it will be that same general concept, you know, to kind of lay the groundwork. I don't think Civil War is going to happen in Captain America 3. That's something to where a lot of people are confused, and they're thinking, you know, like, man, they're going to really try to I agree. Know, cram that into Captain 3? <laughs> yeah. I think Cap 3 is going to lay the groundwork. I think Robert Downey's going to not just have a cameo in it. I think he's going to have a, a good chunk of the film. But I don't even think you're going to see him as Iron Man in Captain America 3. I think he's just going to be Tony, and I think it's going to be a lot of the of them going back and forth. I like it because they already started their kind of 
back and forthness, you know, in a, in the first Avengers film, and I'm curious to see how their relationship's going to pro- you know progress in Avengers two. And if put on it, the suit, you know, put on the suit <laughs> and step up, you know, big man without the suit, and uh, you know, so I I feel like they're going to just lay the groundwork. Um, and then I don't know if they're just going to do an actual Civil War movie, or is Avengers three going to be now Civil War? That's the that's the next big kind of piece of the puzzle. Is like, do you just make a standalone film called Civil War, or do you you know subtitle Avengers three, which it's kind of crazy because we all expected Avengers three to kind of be the, the infinity gauntlet and we'll finally get yeah. Thanos and all this stuff. So now Thanos gets a backseat as we push that even farther down the road to make room for civil war. Now I have, because of the timing of all of this, the Spider-Man issue, I, I have to feel that a lot of these talks that have been going down between Marvel and Sony is because of civil war that they want to acquire Spider-Man, they want to bring him into the mix, and, um, you know, I think they're really trying to work out some kind of deal, because Spider-Man plays such a big part in that storyline. Um, I know in the comics, a big part of the the Civil War storyline is revealing their true identities, right? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that, yeah that's so, right. Yeah. So, the, I was telling Pat earlier today at work, when I really sat and thought about it, I'm like, no one really in the MCU has a secret identity. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, if you really think about it, I mean, you know, Black Widow... I mean, Widow Parker... Is, well, Par- oh, I mean, in the MCU, MCU, my bad, yeah. In the MCU, no one... Yeah, right. you know, everybody knows Steve Rogers as Cap, and <laughs> everybody knows Tony Stark as Iron Man, and, you know, Banner has been... You know, I mean, Black Widow, for God's sakes, was, you know, at a government hearing at the end of, <laughs> you know, of uh, Cap 2. So You're right, and I mean, the the future heroes they have luke cage is luke cage and dr strange is dr strange so yeah, so you so. you got daredevil that's daredevil coming yeah daredevil. i mean ant-man maybe yeah. nobody knows who he is but i just I, I don't think i don't think the the cinematic version of civil war will have anything to do with true identities i think it's just going to be maybe you know it'll probably still be about something about registering the heroes and having them be accounted for and yeah you know all of this but like i said i think it's just going to be a lot of groundwork but with spider-man I really, really feel that, like, all of this talk lately, the timing just seems too coincidental with this news dropping that they really want to work something like this out. Um, the big question, though, is, you know, do they try to just loan out Spider-Man or do they straight up try to buy him back <laughs> in the in the big picture of it all? Um, it's It's a tricky spot because if they loan him out and they kind of work something with Sony and they bring him into this universe, then Sony's pretty much going to have to just let go of whatever universe they want to build because they're going to be under the direction of Kevin Feige and Marvel, and Marvel and their cinematic universe going forward because you can't put him into that and then have him go back to a New York that has nobody else in it. Like, he'll be a part of that shared universe at that point. So that's one way. And then if they buy him out completely, then does Andrew Garfield stay on or do they no. recast? And I feel like they would have to recast if, yeah. they, bought, if they bought it out um, just because those previous movies don't really fit into the universe. I mean, you could always try to say that those Spider-Man 1 and 2 happened before Avengers <laughs> if, you, if you wanted to try to tie it in somehow. But you would have to really set that precedent that those things happened way before. Um, but I think it would be too hard to do and I think Marvel MCU, Marvel proper, would want to kind of distance themselves from the Amazing Spider-Man universe and start fresh with their own. So um, I guess let's start just with the Spider-Man stuff. Uh, start with you, Fred. What do you think, um, how do you think this ties in and what do you think would be the best way for Marvel to kind of handle it if they could? You know, I think about it in the way of kind of looking at it as business, you know, so Sony doesn't really want to lose out on their property that's going to give them a lot of money. I mean, Marvel could say, hey, I'm going to give you, you know, a billion dollars, two billion dollars, whatever for this character. But in the end, like, you know, they they still profit several thousand dollars, several million dollars, rather, uh, for each movie. So I kind of think of it like from a business standpoint, they might be able to work out a deal where they're going to say, hey, you know what? We're going to let you use our character for your movie and let us reference your world. And, you know, I think that that could work because, um, you know, Sean and I kind of briefly touched on in our last episode on the People's Forum 
And, and I, you could come up with any number of excuses, and I kind of say, you know what? So Spider-Man wasn't in New York at the time of the attack. It's not that far off to think, you know, he took a tr- school field trip to another city or something. He just wasn't there. That attack happened within a matter of hours. And, you know, maybe you say, well, why wasn't Tony Stark there when Electro was attacking or the Lizard was attacking? Well, Tony Stark spent most of his time in California. It wasn't until Avengers that he was building the tower in New York. So, you know, there's ways that you can explain the absence of these other characters. So I think financially you could say, you borrow our character, you know, you'll make the profits there. We get to kind of say, you know, incorporate your world. So maybe Spider-Man swings on the Avengers Tower every once in a while in our movies. But if they stick to the Spider-Man villains and Spider-Man characters and they don't really, like, tie too much into the the Marvel world, it could be done. So I think that's kind of how it's going to play. And I feel like, you know, financially, it'd probably be, unless, you know, Marvel offers them a killer deal, I think it would probably be a a good way for them to both kind of benefit by being able to play off of each other. They can, you know they can benefit. The, the problem, the problem is, is the, the big fuck up of Amazing Spider-Man Two was too many cooks in the kitchen, and that's really what you're looking at here. If you know Disney Marvel says to Sony, "We'll pay you a hundred million dollars to use, um, you know, Spidey and Avengers 3. and they're like, "Okay, cool," but then. Like, I, you know, this has always been the problem of why heroes with one studio can't work with another studio because it's too much for each to play right because you would constantly have to reference each other and Sony would always have to go to Marvel and say, hey, this is what we want to do with Spidey. Is it okay? Does this fit your mold? Is this all right that we do this with this character? And vice versa. You know, the Disney Marvel says, we want Spider-Man to come in and he's going to get in a big fight with Loki and... Then Sony goes, nope, we don't want him fighting Loki in this movie, and then kind of shut it down, and, and then it's a lot of back and forth and negotiation over it. To whereas, if Marvel just says, here's two billion dollars, give him back, <laughs> then then they just have full control over it. And I and I feel like, I don't know, I just think it would be so hard to just kind of rent him a speak. Well, I mean, it, it'd be cool. But I just I feel like there's a lot of egos in this business, and Sony's gonna want their Spider-Man to look strong and look to be one of the best people, and Marvel's gonna do whatever fits best for their universe, and that might not go cor- you know coincide with what Sony's trying to do and their future of the of the Spider-Man films. I, I I think we're listing something big here too. I don't think Marvel or Disney cares enough about Spider-Man as a character to, to need him back. They don't need Spider-Man. Sony needs to do something with Spider-Man. I don't think they have a plan anymore. I think they, they, That's they're true. lost. I think they have to reach out to Marvel and make some kind of deal to sell him back. Um, they, they pushed the movie back. There's rumors on Am I on the Air? At least I heard it. There's rumors where they're canceling Venom. They don't know about the Sinister Six. And I'm not going to go watch a Sinister Six movie without a Spider-Man. And I don't, I don't care enough about any of those characters to want to no talk sense. off. That's it. That's all I care about in the Sinister Six. Um, he's the only interesting character. So, I mean, you're looking at the fact that I don't think Marvel needs Spider-Man. They've made it this far without him. They've, they, they came to terms they don't have the rights to him, and they're not going to get him back. And so they started building this world. And so, yeah, it would fit if they had him in the Civil War, but I think because of the way that it's already going to have to be made, they could do it without him. So I really think the, the, the ball is in Marvel's court, not Sony. So I don't think Sony can go from a business standpoint any other way than just selling him back i don't think marvel's gonna rent they're gonna want him back or nothing at all that's how i feel what do you think sean i'm i'm just it's what everything you guys are saying would make sense it makes a lot of sense but i just want to see ultimate spider-man so i'm that that's where i'm putting my vote is for ultimate spider-man to be added to the mcu that's all like i'll say about diet Well, that's that's a great topic because they could bring in a different version of Spider-Man. It doesn't necessarily have to be Peter Parker. You know, um, on the People's Forum, we talked about maybe Miles Morales and, you know, Spider-Woman. It's not happening. They want Peter Parker. That's what Spider-Ham. Yeah. Peter Parker is what people relate to that most of the masses are going to have no idea who the fuck you're talking about with Miles yeah. Morales. He's so and, niche. Uh, He's yeah. so but niche. M- MCU but has proven that they can 
bring a character that nobody knows about and and get you to like them. But but that's different. There's a difference of saying, here's Guardians of the Galaxy, and here's a tree and a raccoon, and, and you might not know who they are, but they're pretty cool, check them out. And then comparing that to, here's Spider-Man, the hero you know and love, but it's not Peter Parker. Like, there's just, there there's a difference there. There's a big difference there. That's why they always said they're not going to ever do a Batman Beyond movie or anything like that, because people want Bruce Wayne. They don't want, you know... Who's I want over Terry, Terry McGinnis. McGinnis. <laughs> I want McGinnis too. <laughs> I do yeah, too. But, but once again, but that's what I'm saying. If you look at it from the masses standpoint, the people that are yeah. going to go pay money to see this, people sure. hear Batman, they think Bruce Wayne. People yeah. see Spider Man, they see Peter Parker, and that's that's even goes with Hal Jordan, Green Lantern. Like you know, yep. it's like yeah, there's a, there's other versions of all these characters. You know, you got the Flash. Barry Allen. People want to don't, don't we don't want Wally. Like we want you know <laughs> Barry. Like, you know, so it's like I mean, I I don't see I, I'm not saying I personally disagree. I mean I think it'd be interesting to see a different version of Spider Man on the big screen. But from a studio standpoint, I just don't see them taking a risk. If even if they buy it and they reboot it it's going to be Peter Parker again. I mean, yeah. that's just, that's just that's what it's true. going to be. <laughs> I mean, if Marvel can make shopping carts look good, they can do it for Spider-Man. <laughs> and, and, I, and I think that the only way that Miles could ever work is if Peter Parker was first. And then Miles right. came in. We could accept it at that point as, as the general populace in the cinema world because it's much different than a comic book. You can put off a one or two issue of this and see if it works. The Marvel universe is so solid now, they don't want to just put off some kind of spinoff movie that may or may not work, you know? And think about it. I mean, if Marvel, Disney Marvel, acquired Spider-Man and got to do Spider-Man for the first time ever, they're not going to not do Peter Parker. Oh, like, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, they're they're going to do Spider-Man the proper way and the right way that, that Marvel knows how to do their characters. So, um, I, you know, this is all speculation. We don't know what the hell's going on with Spider-Man, truly. I mean, it just seems kind of coincidental that within two weeks of the news dropping of maybe Marvel and Sony working something out, Look at Civil War pop up, and and we you know we know that you know Spidey's kind of you know that he would play kind of the role of like a movie going fan in the movie you know to where it's like oh here's Iron Man side here's Cap side and he kind of play, gets to see both sides and we kind of get to go with Spidey along that ride to see which which side would we pick kind of thing so it, it it'll be interesting so but putting Spidey aside Civil War going back to that. And seeing, okay, let's think, who can they utilize in this thing? And obviously you bring in all your guns and you have your Thor and your Hulk and Hawkeye and Black Widow. And by the time this would come out, you would, of course, now have Ant-Man. You'd have Doctor Strange, possibly Black Panther. You would definitely bring in um, your Netflix guys. So you would have Daredevil. You'd have Iron, you know, Iron Fist, Luke Cage. So, so you would have a, a good big group of people. I don't know if Guardians would really tie in by this point. Um, no, I don't think so. You know, it doesn't really fit into the storyline. But there, right. but I would say this is a great opportunity to bring the Netflix guys onto the big screen because yeah. I think that would really, really bring things together. Um, you know, you can bring Shield back into it. Now we know that the seeds were planted that Stark was kind of. You know, he hired Maria Hill at the end of Winter Soldier, so he could end up being the one to take over S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, in in the end of things, you know, who knows? At the end of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2 right now that we're watching, Robert Downey could pop up, for all we know, and saying he's taking over S.H.I.E.L.D. and he's going to rebuild it from the ground up. And then that plays another role into him maybe going to Cap and saying, hey, come be with, you know, my S.H.I.E.L.D. group. And him being like, hell no. (laughs) Like, I want nothing to do with S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, kind of thing. And... And that happened in the comic books, too, where Tony Stark did yep. become the director. Yep. He had this, like, awesome armada of, you know, Iron Man soldiers that, he, you know, he was directing around. And that would be fantastic for the Marvel Universe and could be leading, like you're saying, into the Civil War. The other thing you have to take into, fact, or into factor is um, the fact that we're getting um, – I don't know what to call them. I'm going to call them Inhumans because I, I still have bets that they're going to call them Inhumans. But, like, you know, Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch – they can't yeah. call them mutants, right. so they're going to call them something else. So maybe the gifted. registration is just, yeah, gifted. Maybe gifted. just saying you have to register you have powers, not so much your identity. 
Um, you know, something I like think that. it's going to still be called the Superhero Registration Act, and I think it's going to be, if you're going to be a superhero, you have to have some responsibilities. Because if you remember on paper, like I said, it sounded good. The plot of this was, the Superhero Registration Act was that they're going to be like police officers. Because there was, there was actually comic books leading up, leading up to this, if you remember. And, and they were going to be like police officers. They would be able to be held to that moral responsibility. And so part of that was supposed to be the 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 unmasking of them and that's what everyone remembers is like i'm not taking off my mask and then spider-man took his off but the truth is i think it's really just going to be a registration of heroes because like there's people who don't have powers and again they, they all their identities are known so i don't think it's going to be based on identity right so thinking cinematically again you know, so you, like I said, if you go off of the end of Age of Ultron, you have a Tony Stark that's reti- that's retiring as Iron Man, feels very you know personal on you know uh, the fact of what Ultron has done and how he was created by his hands, um, and and walks away. He could you know want to work from behind the scenes to protect people and start this registration act, buy Shield out, you know, take over Shield, kind of keep that going, which will lead into event uh, Captain America three. And then you see him trying to recruit Cap to, you know, work for him and then telling him, you know, like they could work something in with this registration act to where Cap obviously disagrees. They kind of get into it um, and kind of plants those seeds uh, moving forward. So to kind of summarize where we're heading and I want to get everybody's views again, let's, you know, talk. What do you, what do you think, first of all, about. Robert Downey joining Captain America 3, which I think is pretty damn huge in its own right. Um, Does this, I guess, take away from the fact that this is Captain America 3, because you've now put Tony Stark in the film, which kind of outshines, you know, Cap. (laughs) But do you feel like this could still be a Cap 3 film? Um, You know, do you think this is a good move on Marvel's part to head in this direction? And how do you see the storyline playing out? Peeps, I'll start with you. What do you you think, summarizing up where we're going? Oh, man. Like you said, when when I heard that he was joining, you know, Captain America 3, uh, you know, I got all excited, giddy. And, but I even said to myself, like, it's about time. I mean, how many solo Marvel films have they had where there are these super tragic events that are, you know, possibly going to destroy the world and, there's only one superhero that that is actually handling these these, these issues, and it, it's great. I think that that's you know, I, you know, Tony Stark is going to be in this movie, but I just I don't know. I like you said. I mean, Robert Downey, he is such a likable character, and and with him being in there for give him like 20 minutes, he's right there, just going to kind of outshine Captain America and Chris Evans. Um, so. I honestly have no idea where, where they're going to go with this, and and as you said before, I also agree that this is just planting the seeds of the Civil War. I think, you know, Captain America Three is going to happen. It's going to have its own event. It's not going to be Civil War, but everything that happens from starting from Captain America Three is, is what's going to lead towards the Civil War. Um, I think even Avengers Three is going to. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I can't see Avengers three really being about civil war. Like there has to be some sort of event that happens involving the superheroes that creates this doubt in um in the public because that's w- w- how it was with the comic. Like the public is starting to doubt that superheroes can keep us safe because you know there's a lot of um, collateral damage. There's a lot of casualties, and you know we need a you know we need a different approach and. Age of Ultron, I mean, with Tony Stark being in charge of creating all the robots, or really Ultron, you know, maybe that creates the doubt, and and, and, and with it being the MCU, I honestly have no idea where, where, where it's going to go, but I would like to see the Infinity Gauntlet be in the um, Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, more tied in with them, and the Avengers kind of jump into that, um, and same thing with the... Um, with uh, whatever's going to be happening in Avengers 3. Like, Avengers 3, I would like that to be... I don't know, like... It, it, uh, something Avengers separate Avengers 3 than still sticks with Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet and him and Thanos creating that ultimate destruction to where it causes, like you just said, 
the fact to where you know we as humans all step up and say i don't think these guys can protect us anymore exactly because exactly. thanos is such a badass and when he comes to earth he's gonna fuck some shit up and it might just be the thing that crosses that motive over to are we truly protected if these out of space gods come down and try to fuck with us yeah but i i don't want to see a civil war honestly on film yet i think it's too early and I, just, I would rather, there's so many other things I would like to see first, but like, like, like we said, if this is just planting the seeds into a possible civil war somewhere in 2020, I'm okay with it, but I, I don't want to well, see... You're stretching way too far out. <laughs> I don't want I don't want to see it anytime soon. I don't. Okay, so. well, fair enough. I don't think we're going to make it to 2020 <laughs> before this actually strikes, but uh, Geeky Pat? What is your thoughts on all of this? Well, I, I'm I, I'm not a big Civil War fan, but I can see where it would actually work well on film. Um, these characters have been really established, and I actually trust the Marvel MCU to keep the characters established, so I think that would be good. I think what you and Sean are saying is true, but I kind of think the opposite in a way. I think something will lead up to the Civil War. The Civil War will happen, and, and they're just going to be tearing each other apart in the Civil War, and Thanos attacks in Avengers 3, and that's what pulls the Avengers together. Because they have to come together if they're going to even think about... And the Guardian Galaxies will have to show up, because I don't see how the Avengers that we have now and what we know is going to be at is even going to be able to stop Thanos. If he has the Infinity Gauntlet. It's going to take everything they have. have got to have Guardians. Yeah, so, I mean, it's going to take everything they have, whatever they can add, and everyone from Netflix and two DC characters and a Superman to stop him. So I, I, I definitely think that that's, that's how I feel it would go. Okay, so I you fit- think Civil War before uh, the Thanos Avengers, but so then does Cap 3 be the Civil War, or do you agree that it's just planting the seeds and we'll get like a separate Civil War movie? I feel like it's going to be a separate movie they haven't announced yet. I don't think it could be a one movie event. I think it's going to have to be some of Captain 3 and then the actual Civil War itself will be its own movie and then Thanos attacks in in Avengers. Gotcha. And do you like the addition of Robert Downey to Cap 3? Of course, I like the <laughs> addition of Robert Downey to everything. So there you go. <laughs> the, the thing with with Thanos attacking in Avengers 3 is like he's not attacking Earth in the Infinity Gauntlet. He's not even he doesn't even so care about Earth. I know, <laughs> but he doesn't even care about Earth. His, his his goal is not of Earth. It's it's way beyond Earth. But it just so happens that hey, whatever six, he does will affect gem, Earth. If the sixth gem is on Earth and he's ready to dominate, <laughs> yeah, he's gonna come down to get that sixth gem. Big and time. Then he unleashes hell while he's here. I don't, I don't think it's going to play out like the comic book because there's so many characters involved in the Infinity Gauntlet. I mean, he almost like just wipes everybody out. I don't see how they could do that in the cinematic universe. So I think it's going to be just like Don said. I think the last thing he needs to to completely rule everything is going to be on Earth, and that's why he's going to come. There you go. All right. Well, Mr. Lobster Johnson, what you got? Um, All right. So the way, that, <laughs> you know, the way, <laughs> the way that I'm kind of like taking a look at this is, you know, I'm looking at what are the movies we have lined up to build up to these events. So I definitely think that Cap America Three is going to be its own thing, le- having something to lead up to a civil war. Um, you know, Sean, you were talking about there needs to be an event that's going to cause distrust. Well, the fact that some of the stuff that we know about um, Avengers 2 already, you know, that there's a lot of talk about Tony Stark being the cause of Ultron, you know, feeling bad for that, and and some bad things are going to happen. You know, we could see Hulk, you know, kind of being infected and going crazy and maybe causing some distrust. Um, The fact that, you know, a hero built Ultron causes distrust. So a lot of that distrust could occur within Avengers 2. Then following that, you know, we know we're going to have that Captain America 3, but Captain America 2 left off with kind of like, you know, Cap and Falcon needing to go find Bucky and kind of wrap up that storyline. So I think that Captain America 2 will probably, you know, center on that, but now with Robert Downey Jr. uh, being in there, we'll have some ties of creating the line, and by the end of the movie, 
that line will be defined. And that's where we'll, we'll fall into like a civil war. Uh, I think civil war is probably going to be looking at being its own film. Because and the other thing you have to look at is, so we know that also from the other movies that um, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is going to happen. So that's where maybe Thanos picks up some of the gems that he's been missing. And he can, uh, you know, get working with those. Um, we know that the gauntlet is in Asgard. So maybe Thor 3, Asgard gets attacked by Thanos so he can claim that gauntlet. Or if he doesn't attack it himself, maybe he, you know, hires someone to come and get it. So then he can get the gauntlet there. So that gives us Captain America 3, you know, and Thor 3, and then we get Civil War, and then we get, you know, the the big Avengers uh, where, where Thanos comes down to, to Earth to cause havoc. Boom. There you go. And the rumor is, once it gets rumor, because all this news is just breaking this week, with that Captain America 3 could be subtitled Fallen Sun. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, just so you know. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There's the first half of this special right now, uh, talking about the big, big news. Robert Downey Jr. definitely coming on board for Captain America 3 and planting the seeds for a Civil War movie. How that will play out, we're all speculating. It could go many different ways, um, but I would you know, expect it to lay the seeds in Cap 3. Cap 3 will still be its own Captain America film. It'll still have its, you know, like like Fred said, it, I think it's going to focus a lot on Bucky and, and really working with the Winter Soldier and whatever kind of threat that they have there. And I kind of believe that Red Skull is going to come back in this one. Um, That'd be bad. Yeah. You know, I, I think we're finally going to get that. Uh, Bucky will become Bucky again. And I really do feel if they go down the Civil War route, it could be what does, you know, continues like the comic and kills off Steve Rogers. And I think Bucky could pick up that mantle for a couple films until Steve makes his righteous return down the road. <laughs> so awesome yeah there's a lot a lot of possibilities here you know i i read uh, another rumor about the end of avengers that once you know uh, iron man uh at the end of ultron i mean they're, it's such a dark movie i mean they're comparing this a lot to like empire strikes back you know like there's like it's so darker it's a good than one. The original avengers and that really at the end of this film they're all pretty beat up and discouraged and sad and that by the end of the film you know like i said uh Tony Stark walks away. He's not an Avenger anymore. He retires as Iron Man. He says, I can't do this anymore because he feels so guilty. Uh, Thor goes back to Asgard. Uh, Hulk, who knows what the fuck is up with him. And that really, the planet. <laughs> and that yeah. really the Avengers team at this point will shift. And from what I read, it was like led by Cap, but with Falcon, War Machine, uh, Black Widow, Hawkeye. Vision? Um, Vision, yes, you know, like that's that's your new awesome. lineup awesome. by the end of the film. So it, there's so many different ways this is gonna go, man. And so I mean, it can't get to May quick enough, so we can kind of get a little glimpse into where we're headed um, with Avengers: Age of Ultron. So, all right, part one out the way. Now we shift to today's gigantic news. We've known for a long time that DC has been trying to launch their cinematic universe. They did Green Lantern a couple years ago, and it was, you know, some people like it, some people don't, but overall, it's kind of panned, and they didn't know if they wanted to kind of continue on from there. We got Man of Steel. Man of Steel was awesome. Most people loved it. It was a great relaunch of Superman, and at the Comic-Con after Man of Steel came out, they you know, made this shocking, amazing news drop that they were going to do Batman versus Superman. And that was like, holy shit, holy shit, this is so tight. They're going to, you know, finally we're going to see the two biggest heroes clash on the big screen. Then, you know, we've been hearing all of these news about, okay, so we added Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman, and we've been hearing possibly rumors that Jason Momoa is on as Aquaman and maybe we'll see Flash, maybe we'll see a Green Lantern, maybe we'll see this and that. All these heroes that we're hearing rumored to pop up. Um, you know, we got Lex Luthor, we got this big, big movie that was originally supposed to come out in 2015, then got pushed to 2016. 
then in 2016 was actually going to go head to head with Captain America 3 that we just talked about. So that was going to be crazy. And then DC said, okay, we don't want to really go head to head, so we're going to move up. And now the movie comes out March 26th of 2016. So they're going to get a big head start on the summer, probably dominate, you know, March and April, uh, up until Cap 3 comes out. And, uh, a couple months ago, DC announced some dates. They said, here's some dates that we bought, but they didn't announce any titles. So it's all been speculation. Well, today that speculation was laid to rest and there's some surprises here and there's some, you know, some crazy spots where things have landed, but it's exciting though. So here we go. 2016, of course, will start with Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. The second film releasing, because there will be two films a year, kind of like what Marvel does. The second film to be released on August 5th, 2016, is the Suicide Squad movie. This is very interesting to me, (laughs) because I knew they were doing Suicide Squad, and it's going to be directed by David Ayer, who directed the new movie Fury, which comes out this weekend that I know Geeky Pat's stoked to see. (laughs) Um, He did End of Watch. Oh, yeah. He did End of Watch. He did Sabotage. Uh, He wrote Training Day. So the guy's got a definite great vision, and I think he's going to be awesome for Suicide Squad. But... I thought Suicide Squad would be years down the road. I can't believe this is the second big release to come out from DC is going to be this villain-centric movie. So that's kind of crazy right there. Um, I think on. that's their that's DC's risk right there, Suicide Squad. Yeah, that's their Guardians right there. It was a risk as a comic book, if you remember. And they tried it like four times before it succeeded. So then we go to 2017. 2017's first movie up will be Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman will finally get her solo film. It will star uh, Gal Gadot again, and it will be out on June 23rd. Then, the second film of 2017 is going to be Justice League, directed by Zack Snyder, who of course did Man of Steel and is doing Batman v Superman. Justice League is going to come out on November 10th, so it's not even going to be a summer movie. So that's kind of crazy, man. Because I mean, that's their Avengers right there, and they're not even yeah. going. They're not even going primetime summer. They're going in November. So Wonder Woman in June and um, Justice League in November. Then we go to 2018. 2018's first film is going to be The Flash, and The Flash comes out on my birthday, March 23rd, 2018. And not only did they announce The Flash, but they also announced that Ezra Miller is going to be The Flash. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk more about that. Calm down. Because <laughs> I don't think any of us are very happy with that. Then, also, following The Flash, will be the Aquaman movie, confirming that Jason Momoa is Aquaman, and that will be out on July 27th. Then we go to 2019, and they will release Shazam!, of course, the movie starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who will play Black Adam. That will come out on April 5th, 2019. Then Justice League 2. Kind of crazy. It comes super quick. Um, and it will also be directed by Zack Snyder again. And it will come out on June 14th. So there we go. So Justice League gets the summer spot <laughs> on part two. <laughs> then lastly, in 2020... You're going to get the Cyborg movie starring Ray Fisher, who is going to be Cyborg. Uh, I think you're going to see him teased in Batman v Superman. I don't think he'll be Cyborg in Batman v Superman, but they'll introduce the character, kind of tease him, and then we'll go from there. But Cyborg will get his own movie on April 3rd, 2020. And then lastly, a reboot of Green Lantern on June 19th. So, kind of crazy, man. So, let's <laughs> real quickly, once again... 20, 2016 is Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, and the Suicide Squad. 2017 is Wonder Woman and Justice League. 2018 is The Flash and Aquaman. 2019 is Shazam and Justice League 2. And 2020 is Cyborg and Green Lantern. So, before we get into the details of this, let's just talk reactions. I think this is pretty exciting. Uh, the only thing omitted here is no Man of Steel 2 and no solo Batman movies. Yeah, I noticed ben that. Affleck. So, 
WB did state today that there are plans for those, and they're still working those out, and they could be announced at a later date. So it's not to say that they're not going to do them, but it's just not a part of this original tentpole, which I don't think really hurts because you got Batman Superman, then you got Justice League, which you know they'll both be in. Then you got Justice League 2, which you know they'll both be in. So they're, they're going to be in movies for the next six years without having another solo film. I think they'll still probably drop a solo film here and there for both of them at some point um, before 2020. <laughs> but that's still something kind of in the works. So let's just talk reactions. So I'll start with you, Fred. You hear this news. What do you think of DC's lineup? Oh, I'm excited. I cannot freaking wait. Uh, there's just so much stuff. Everything looks great. Everything's, like, just super, super excited. First off, I, I have to admit, I had a little disappointment. My first disappointment was the fact that I have to wait till 2016 before I get to see a single one of these movies. I cannot get here any faster. Um, my other disappointment was 2020 for Green Lantern. I was really hoping to get Green Lantern a little earlier, but I must admit... I was also kind of expecting him not to even be on the list. So the fact that uh, Green Lantern even makes it to to this list is super, super exciting. But I will um, make a, a couple notes real quick, and I'll let some of the other guys do like Something that stands out to me is Suicide Squad. I know, like, you know, you guys were talking, uh, Don, you were saying how you thought it was going to be much later. I think Suicide Squad is is the risk move, but it's also the move that has to work right now. And I say that because, you know, Geek Pat mentioned that the comic book struggled when it first came out, and they had so many variations of it. And even when the New 52 launched um, in the comic book world, the first run of Suicide Squad did not do well. They ended up revamping and coming up with the second, um, second run, which is only three or four issues in at this time. And um, that run hasn't been too bad. And the thing about the Suicide Squad is they have characters that are popular right now. And that's, that's the key. It, they need to run with this right now because it's kind of in the limelight. They just released um, an animated movie of the Suicide Squad, which kind of puts them out there. Um, you know, again, they're trying to run this um, this comic book, and they've included characters that um, are really popular, like Deathstroke, for example. He's really big in the Arrow TV so- series. Um, there's also Deadshot. He's in Arrow TV uh, also. He's he's not as big as Deathstroke, but you know those two guys are going to most likely be on the Suicide Squad. And then you have um, uh, Harley Quinn, who's like the Deadpool of DC comic books. She's huge right now. Everybody wants anything to do with Harley Quinn. So the fact that you can get these really popular characters. You need it right now. So that's one of the things that really stood out to me. I'm really stoked about that. My only hope is that they really take it that dark, um, you know, violent direction. I, I don't I don't expect a rated R movie, don't get me wrong, but um, super excited about that. And then the Flash news, I, I'm sure we're going to dive into that a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but that one was the big shocker. It was like, really? And this is coming off after watching two episodes of The Flash – if we, it's 2018. If you let the Flash TV series run to 2018, Barry Allen's going to be established. He's going to be. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get into that. We'll get into but that, that was the other thing that like really st- stuck out to me. So those are the two big, big things for me. Okay. Well, touching back on Suicide Squad, um, you know, to show kind of, I mean, how much an impact that they're making. I mean, you just brought up Arrow. Arrow had a whole episode attached for Suicide Squad last season. Right, right. The whole the whole thing was a Suicide Squad episode. Now, I read a rumored lineup of the team and and kind of crazy Harley Quinn was not a part of the lineup what? that they're going with for the Ooh, cinematic movie. Yo. Which kind of throws me off because Harley Quinn is the only one when I post news about Suicide Squad that's what I'm hearing back from people on Twitter and Facebook is, oh, Harley Quinn. I wonder who they're going to get for Harley Quinn. Everyone wants Harley Quinn. Yeah. And she's not listed on the lineup for this film. It could change, you know, popular demand. Maybe they threw out that rumored lineup just to see what people thought. Well, um, who, who do you have for the rumored lineup? I'm curious. Uh, give me a second to find it here again. I was going to pull that up before, but. You could have two seconds. It's good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Deadshot was on there. And, uh... Def- yeah, Deadshot was definitely on there. Um, I will tell you what they said in the conference call today was that um, 
they want to make Suicide Squad a ginormous hit. So they're looking to, they said, to get at least three A-list actors in this film. Like, they're going full out. And just today, I heard they have sent out um, offers to Will Smith, Margot Robbie, and Tom Hardy to be a part of the Suicide Squad. Will Smith is the Black Manta. (laughs) That would be awesome. And Tom Hardy is Bane? Just kidding. (laughs) Yeah, Tom Hardy back is Bane. Uh, So let's see here. Okay, so Suicide Squad, reportedly the team will be... Uh, Deadshot will be the central character with Captain Boomerang and Vixen as the co-leads. Uh, surprisingly absent is Harley Quinn, despite who not being on the original roster, has been part of the New 52 incarnation and even cameoed on the Arrows episode. This one's not giving me the full squad. But, uh... All I really care about is Harley Quinn and Deathstroke. The movie will be Blockbuster, Multiplex, Mind Blogger, Jakuli, <laughs> Captain Boog- Boomerang, a.k.a. Harkness, Vixen, and Deadshot. Wow. Blockbuster, huh? Right. <laughs> so, they need a Hulk on their team, I guess. <laughs> so there's your rumor right there. So, yeah, so Suicide Squad. Um, and then, yeah, we'll get into the other stuff later. So, uh Peeps, initial reactions. You hear this news break, boom, check out all these films for the next six years. What do you think? Sorry, did you call Peeps? Yes. I was I was chewing on my mic, sorry. Um, um, <laughs> I had, just quickly, I had two, two first thoughts, uh, you know, first impressions of this. Um, number one, I can't remember, so I'll start with the second one first, but... I, I'm afraid. I, I, I want show me the money. I, I, with Marvel, you talk about all the time how Kevin Feige is the the boss above all when it comes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If things aren't working out for a director, they get booted. He pretty much wants everything to kind of flow together so that once they do have that Avengers film, it, it, it kind of all comes together and makes sense. I'm hoping that. We, we have the same type of direction for this movie, and we don't have a bunch of Spider-Man 2 mo- films that are, that are coming out with everybody wanting to add their own um, you know, spin and twist on these characters. Um, and so, yeah, so that, that's my... I'm, I'm just pretty worried about that. And, um, yeah, I, I honestly couldn't remember what my other point that I wanted to make here. Did I write it down? No, I didn't. <laughs> so we can come back to me later on but you know it, it, it's i'm a marvel guy so you know show me the money with these dc films um i would love to see a batman stand alone and i'm kind of bummed out that I, oh i know what it was i called it so anybody that wants to know who all these characters are you can listen to the people's forum i called every i have every single one of these characters that they have listed until 2020 as my picks for who i think is going to be on the justice league so we do a little intro for each of these characters if y'all are interested. Yeah, well, no, sorry. they haven't confirmed the Justice League team yet. So I'm just saying the <laughs> the names at least. Yeah, I, I know how you said Sajam. I always get that Shazam. wrong. It's going to be you know a different. Uh, it's going to be New Line instead of uh, Warner Brothers. So he you know probably won't be on the JL. I don't know. I feel like this this conference call, that's where this news came from today, by the way. Uh, the head of Warner Brothers was doing a, a conference call about their their upcoming slate of just general movies, because, I mean, they also announced, like, a new Harry Potter trilogy and more Lego movies and all kinds of stuff. But when they talked about DC, he laid into the whole slate and kind of what they're looking to do. Um, there's... One of the crazy things about this that kind of has me scratching my head is when they talked about Justice League, they specifically stated it's going to be directed by Zack Snyder and will have Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill along with Amy Adams reprising their roles. It said nothing about Gal Gadot (laughs) and it, it said nothing really about any of these other characters like Jason Momoa or Ezra Miller or maybe, you know, Green Lantern or, or, you know, any of these other characters even being a part of that film. So I'm wondering, and if you really look into the slate too, they specifically mark out Justice League Part 1 and Justice League Part 2, which seems kind of odd to me because 
the way it's written makes it feel very much that it's a two-parter movie, you know, and that you just, you have part one, it's going to end with a cliffhanger, and then you get part two, uh, you know, two years after. And maybe part one is just a setup of them putting the team together, maybe? <laughs> and then maybe. part two is the full-on thing, you know? So, I mean, that's maybe that's why part one is in November, and part two is in the middle of the summer, like... I don't know. I mean, once again, just kind of speculation to that. But uh, so let's go to the DC guy, Mr. Geeky Pat. You love DC. This is your jam right here. I broke this news to you earlier. <laughs> what were your thoughts when I sent this to you? I had goosebumps. Uh, outstanding. So, I, I mean, the Suicide Squad did did surprise me, but it makes sense because we're going to have this elderly Batman when he's not elderly. He's Mr. experienced. Mr. Yeah, he's experienced. And so we're going to wonder what happens to some of these villains and some of these other characters. And I think the Suicide Squad gets to introduce some of those characters of a world that's already existing. Like, like we don't have to have a... Because they already exist, we don't have to have origin stories. Does that make sense? So this kind of throws them into that area. We get to see if... Is Amanda Waller going to be part of it, I wonder? I don't know. She is in the comic books. Um... So I mean, I'm very excited about this, this Suicide Squad. It's one, it was one of my favorite comic books even back in the day when before the New Fifty Two revamped it, revamped it again. Um, but it was awesome in the New Fifty Two as well. I mean, uh, I really liked it. I, my wor- I have some worries. Um, I don't. I, I don't think Green Lantern is going to be part of much of this universe. And I think it, until the until 2020, I think because they said. The way you described it to me was it's going to be the Green Lantern origin in 2020. Is that correct? Well, it's listed as the Green Lantern reboot in 2020. Reboot. Yeah, so that worries me. Like, I've always thought they weren't going to have Green Lantern in the first Justice League movie. Uh, I said possibly the second, but now I'm not so sure about that now because I have to wait till I'm 44 to see it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, so that that's kind of disappointing to me. Um and Cyborg's a little weird, too. I'm kind of wondering who the heck's going to be the Justice League at this point. If they're not there, and maybe Shazam's not even in or not in the end, like Sean said and you said, Shazam may or may not be part of this universe. Flash is very weird. Um, I don't know. I mean, really, I think what's going to... What's really going to set the tone for Mike's... I'm excited that they have all these movies slated. Don't get me wrong. But what's going to set the tone for me, and this is probably going to shock a lot of people, is really what... I mean, Suicide Squad's great, but I don't think it's really going to be tied into anything that... Well, Mike could be wrong. But I don't think it's going to be tied into what's going on in the Justice League and so forth and so on. So I think what's going to happen in Batman and Superman and then ultimately into the Justice League movie... But then it's interesting that they have a Wonder Woman movie before that. See, because we always kind of speculated it would go from Batman, Superman, I mean, Batman v. Superman to the Justice League, because they were filming it back-to-back, you know? Yeah. But now you have a Wonder Woman movie in there. Now, is this an origin movie that's happened before that, or is it like it goes from Batman v. Superman to Wonder Woman, then Wonder Woman to Justice League, Justice League to Flash, Flash to Aquaman, then Justice League 2? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, maybe this is one large story arc. So, I don't know. I feel like it, it is going to end up being one large story arc, <laughs> to be honest. And it's broken I, up that way, I isn't heard, it? I did, you know, going back to your, you know, question about Green Lantern, I did hear today from a pretty good source <laughs> who knows a lot about these films and can only say certain things, doesn't want to get into trouble, uh, and pretty much went on the record today and said that you will definitely see Green Lantern before 2020. That this is just, that's when he'll get his solo movie. They want to really build up Green Lantern again. So you're going to see him in Justice League. You're going to see him in Justice League 2. And then by that point, you have a connection with the character. So by the time 2020 rolls around and they do the Justice League or the Green Lantern movie, you're more invested into the character by that point. And see, that would be awesome. It really would. I really hope that's the way it goes. And for Sean's sake, too, because then we can go right into great villains in the Green Lantern movie. <laughs> Sean loves his villains. Bring those Red Lanterns on. That's right. Nice. So, so, yeah, I mean, if you look at the way this kind of flows, if you look at the slate, I mean, Suicide Squad could be positioned to be right after Batman v Superman to establish a lot of these villains. 
Yeah, you know, so because these villains can play minor roles in a lot of these other films. You know, what if Deadshot's the big baddie in Wonder Woman? You know, you never know like how that how this can transition. And um, so then you have Wonder Woman. I think I think Wonder Woman is first and solo because I honestly think DC is always trying to one up Marvel, and Marvel's. They're trying to beat Marvel to the punch of doing a Miss Marvel or Captain Marvel movie, doing that Black Widow spinoff movie, you know, because people are wanting a female superhero, plain and simple. And True. They want, you know, Sony even recently came out and said, we're going to do Spider-Girl, we're, you know, we're going to put out a female hero too, and they're trying to work on their shit. So you know what? DC just came out the gate today and said, guess what, bitches? We come in 2017. You know, so like, and you're gonna see her in 2016 a little bit. (laughs) Exactly. So I, this makes me feel like her role in Batman v Superman is not going to be that big. I think you're going to kind of get introduced to her. I think we're going to get a snippet of Aquaman. I think you know we might get a snippet of a lot of these heroes. I've I even heard a rumor earlier today that there is a little um, Green Lantern cameo that's going to be in Batman v Superman. So. And and what I wonder too, when they say the 2020 Green Lantern is a reboot, if what if let's just say hypothetically they get Ryan Reynolds back, awesome, and he's Hal Jordan in Batman v Superman for like literally like one scene or something, you just see Hal Jordan at the airport or some shit, right? Yeah, <laughs> that would then, be awesome. And then and then he's in Justice League Part One, and in Justice League Part Two he dies, and then in 2020. You get the reboot with Idris Elba as John Stewart, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So, so I, w- I mean, I mean, who knows? I mean, that maybe that's what they mean by reboot is that they're going to pass the torch by that point to to the next Green Lantern, uh, you know? Like, and, and so they can try. I, I don't know. Most likely, especially with the Deadpool news lately, I, I think Reynolds is probably completely out. Um, but it it'll be interesting. I, I believe the source that I heard, and I believe that he's going to be popped up here and there. I think this is going to be an overarching story, you know. So we go from Batman v Superman, we we meet Diana, we meet you know Wonder Woman. Maybe she's involved in a battle at some point, and then we get her full story, you know, solo wise. And then we get Justice League Part One, where they're putting the team together, they're getting everybody together. I heard Brainiac supposedly will probably be the big baddie in the Just in the Justice League film, and then. Then you get the Flash movie. Um, you know, at this point, you've already had Justice League. So now we can spin off. We can do Flash. So let's stop here. Because <laughs> this, of course, is where I know a lot of people have opinions. So, yes, we have a Flash TV series that just started last week. The second episode was yesterday. Awesome. I'm loving this TV show, by the way. I think it's great. I, when this kid got cast as Barry on Arrow last season, I was like, stupid. <laughs> and, and but you know what? I actually really like this dude as Barry, and it, I'm loving this show. It, it's just it. Both episodes are two for two for me. I think this is going to be a great season. I'm very excited. But the question has always been: Is DC going to follow in Marvel's suit, and they're going to make the TV universes connect with the movie world like Marvel does? We've been thinking no. But we never knew for sure. Well, today they obviously shut that down when they announced that a Flash movie was coming and that this Ezra Miller is going to be Flash. We don't know. What we don't know is if he's going to be Barry Allen. He could be a different version for all we know. I don't know. I'm going to assume he's Barry just because, like we talked about earlier, they go with the name recognition and it makes the most sense for him to be Barry. I... (laughs) On pictures and on just things, <laughs> I don't like this casting at all. This dude looks so lame, and it just doesn't seem like somebody I would want as a Barry Allen. He doesn't fit the mold at all. Um, that being said, he was in a movie called Perks of Being a Wallflower, and I forget the other movie he was in, but they were both big, critically successful movies and everything I've heard today has been that this dude is an amazing actor so I have to take a step back and even though I'm looking at a picture and I'm going this dude looks fucking lame (laughs) and I don't want him as Barry I, I have to say 
going with talent is always a great thing to do. The reason why this Ray Fisher, who none of us know, is Cyborg is because he's a Broadway actor, he's a great thespian, and and people love this kid on Broadway. And they saw that, and they saw his potential, and they casted him as Cyborg. No one knows who he is. So they're looking for people that have the background. And this Ezra Miller is supposedly one of the biggest up-and-coming stars in Hollywood right now. And both those roles that he's done have been knocked out of the ballpark, like performances. And, and he supposedly is amazing. So I would never watch the two movies that he's in, but supposedly he's awesome. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Obviously, it's the same thing like when Gal Gadot got cast. It's like she wouldn't be my first choice for Wonder Woman but I have to feel that when you go in for a screen test and you're in front of the director and the producers and you do your lines and you act out a scene, if you knock their socks off and they're like, that's it, that's the person we want, you got to feel that they did something good. So the fact that they announced it this way and they're going with him, I have to have faith. But yes, on paper, I, look, I, I saw the name and I was like, nah. And I looked it up, and I was like, nah. <laughs> I'm like, well, what's going on here? <laughs> but it, it's interesting. I am a little sad that the TV universes aren't connected, because I would love to see Stephen Amell pop up in a Justice League film as Green Arrow. Um, but it, it looks like uh, DC is going to be keeping the universes separate. So let's roll with the Flash. Lobster Johnson, <laughs> what do you think of... First of all, a Flash movie that's not tied in with the TV universe, and what do you think of Ezra Miller as your new Flash? All right, so so first off, a movie that's not tied in with the TV universe is a crying shame. I mean, this is just terrible. It's a that crime. They just, it is a crime. That That is uh, 13-52 AB1, and... That is punishable by death, as far as I'm concerned. Because this, this, that from these... dread because peeps wouldn't know. Yeah, exactly, that was a dread quote, peeps. Come on, get come on. on. It's too soon, guys. <laughs> so it's on this uh, list. It's on, right, right. It's supposed to, supposedly on the top of the list. That's what I heard last. Time. <laughs> it keeps getting moved. <laughs> I hate you guys. I swear to God, minutes long, it wouldn't be that hard to get through it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a shame that that they're not connected because. Barry Allen is killing it right now. I mean, um, the guy playing Barry Allen, uh, Grant Gustafson or something like that, he's phenomenal. He's extremely likable. Um, you know, he brings, like, such passion to the character and, um, you know, heart. And I think, you know, that's definitely one of the things that, that Flash was. He's the heart. He's hope. And, you know, the fact that he can't be part of that universe. It's just, it's, it's terrible. Um, and along with Stephen Amell and all those other things. In fact, Multiplex um, was the villain in, in uh, today's, or yesterday's oh, episode uh, of The Flash. So, yeah, I'm not going to say, you know, anything about the episode, but he was the villain there. So that's, um, you know, mentioned for the Suicide Squad. But back to Flash. Um, I did see The Perks of Being a Wallflower. And that movie, it was was a big surprise for me. It ended up being really, really good. I think um, you guys should definitely check it out. Sean, not you. You have to see Dread first. But um, <laughs> but that movie was really good, and he does a really good job in his character. Um, I absolutely see what they're saying for the talent aspect of it, but I just cannot see him as Flash. If he's going to be Flash... I, I really hope that we're going to get, you know, Wally West or something, because um, he can't be Barry Allen now that we have this this, ver this perfect version of Barry Allen on the, on the television series. And, and I don't see how they do a movie without it being Barry Allen, so it's this big conundrum. So I'm, I'm not a fan of the fact that, that the TV show is not connecting. Um, although I think Ezra Miller is a really good actor and did really well in, in Perks of Being a Wallflower, it's just, he doesn't fit the mold. If you look at Marvel, and I'm sorry, I have to do the comparisons, but, you know, uh, Robert Downey Jr. fits the mold of Tony Stark. He looks the part, he acts the part. Then you get um, Chris Evans, he looks the part, acts the part. Chris Hemsworth looks the part, acts the part. Um, uh, Scarlett Johansson, same thing. Nick Fury, you know, they cheated there. They, the yeah, ultimate they comic cheated. book made it to be uh, Samuel L. Jackson, so that's why that worked out. But you know what I'm saying is that 
Marvel has been successful because they've got characters that not only can act, but also look the part of these characters. And you have to, on some level, stay true to the source material. And I'm okay with them mixing some things up here and there. But, like, that dude doesn't, like, give me Barry, Barry Allen vibe whatsoever. And seeing a movie that he's acted in and, and seeing how his personality came across in that movie, um, you know, I have really low hopes for him being Flash, for him especially being Barry Allen. But I want to make one more point before someone else moves on. The, everyone probably said the exact same thing about Chris Pratt being Star-Lord, you know? This dude didn't look the part. They're like, how's this guy going to be, you know, an action hero? And he turned around, buffed up, and now he's like, you know, a hunky stud that all the the chicks are drooling after. So, you know that that could happen. Just you know, because guy, you're drooling, don't make it seem like all the chicks are. Hey, I just I just got my uh, Star Lord boots in the mail today, so you know I'm pretty pumped. My costume's almost complete. But anyway, um, yeah. So hopefully he, you know, pulls the rabbit trick and 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 ends up being this really awesome flash, but um, I'm disappointed and I'm very skeptical myself. All right. Well, I want to move on to Geeky Pat, who was wearing his flash hoodie today. So, and he's got <laughs> some strong ties to the character. So you saw the lovely picture of this man. And uh, what were your thoughts? <laughs> lovely <him>? indeed. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start <laughs> off. Fabulous like, picture. Before we get you. to him, to be fair, let's start off with what I thought. I really liked when and Sean first saw he I actually watched some of the f- parts with Sean when with the uh, Arrow the second season with the guy they cast as Barry Allen on the TV show and I thought he was perfect so I don't know why you didn't like him I actually liked him as Barry Allen I thought the guy was really kind of nerdy and what he needed to be yet still kind of cool I, I think you felt the same way right Sean I I'm 100% with you I so so yeah I was kind of attached to the kid right off which really disappointed me when I mean, he was awesome. He's awesome in the show right now too. So, it kind of disappointed me when those two worlds weren't going to collide. You know, um, now let's 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 track back to February first, my birthday, the day my wife blew her knee out. You and me are sitting out on a patio, talking about the casting of Superman v. Batman. I'm uh, Batman v. Superman, right? And I didn't like half of what you were telling me. Do you remember that? Oh. <laughs> well, you told me who Lex Luthor was going to be, and you had to explain to me why he would be a great Lex Luthor. Um, you told me who Gal Gadot was going to be Wonder Woman. You had to explain to me why you thought maybe that could work. Um, you know, then you told me Ben Affleck, and you know, I said that's awesome. So, what were the other guys again? No, but uh, we, we, you told me this casting, and I was very skeptical. I feel that same apprehension when you told me this guy was going to be Flash. And I look at these pictures, and, and and you can see where the guy throws himself into the roles. I mean, like some of these pictures, he's in drag, and other pictures, he's got short hair, long hair. Um, he looks Asian in some pictures, and he doesn't look Asian in others, so... <laughs> it's, so, so it's, so it's so weird, right? I, I mean, thought he was Asian, like the first ten pictures I looked at. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I mean, no, he looks white now. What the hell like, this is a Japanese guy. Oh, it's a white guy. Okay, I get it now. So, I mean, but the more I look at him, I could see his face structure. I could see him maybe turn out to be a good Flash, but... My first instinct is that same instinct where I thought, I don't know about the guys playing Lex Luthor, and I don't know about Gal Gadot, and I don't know, you know. So I kind of feel that way now. All they got to do is buff him up, put him in a suit, and I'll be excited probably because I'm a fanboy, right? So <laughs> that's what happened with Gal Gadot. That's, <laughs> I looked at her in that one Wonder Woman suit and said, yeah, it'll work. I was happy. I was good, right? And, oh, yeah. and then I stared at it for a while because, wow, those boots are awesome. Um, but and she's sexy. But I, and now that you're telling me he's a great actor, trying to, I mean, when you when we were first talking, to him, I was like, Ugh. but now you're telling me he's a good actor and he's this critically acclaimed actor. I feel a little better about it. I don't know why, but I do. I feel a little more confident that maybe he could pull the role off and then as i'm looking at the pictures after you tell me that i can see where he's probably throwing himself into some of these roles um but let's be honest the first picture i saw he had lipstick and a samurai haircut it wasn't the 
wasn't the best first impression. That's the one I sent Sean today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying, cool. right? It was all, here's your new flash. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost all hope. So, you know, yeah. I, I, will I give the kid a chance? I don't have a choice. So, yeah, I'm going to give the kid a chance. Do I, would I pick him for flash? No. Not at all. Alrighty, well, peeps, what are your thoughts on Flash? I mean, I, I honestly can't add anything new to this. It's, I, I just think it's a crying shame, you know, to quote Mr. Fred, you know, that he, not just the, the films aren't attached to the TV shows, but I don't even think a lot of the TV shows are even attached to the TV shows. Like, Arrow and Flash, we know, are in the same world, but, you know, we got Gotham, and Gotham, it looks like, is taking place current day because they're using cell phones. Um, you know, you got your Supergirl, you got, um, what's the name, Constantine. You got all these DC superheroes that are go- going to be in these TV shows, and they're going to be on different networks. And I-, I cannot see them ever crossing over into each other's worlds. And that just kind of sucks. I, there's as much fun and potential as that could be where a villain on one show would pop up in a different show or a villain that was created in the, in in the TV show pops up in the movie like I, that would be great and you know you guys are talking about all these films that they have released and you know all these um, you know it, it's going to be one long saga like I, I really hope they don't do that in the films because I think that might get a little played out after a while I, I don't I, I can DC I, you know Fred correct me if I'm wrong but DC kind of has an issue on the comic book world to release you know these comic books once a month and have this one event span over a year, and by the time you're at the end of the year, you just want this event to end already, so you can get to the next chapter and chapter of the you know the the, the comic book world. And I, again, I have no idea what these movies are going to be, but I, I just I don't know. I I don't whatever. But it, it's just it, it bums me out that you know they they don't share the same universe. I love that about Marvel. I love that you know. As much as, you know, it hurts me to say this, I love that X-Men is doing that. And, um, you know, Sony, who knows what they're going to be doing. But it, it's such a good idea to create this Star, War, Star Wars-esque universe where there's, there, you know, there's all these movies and spinoffs and they're all happening in the same universe. It, I love it. It's brilliant. But it just kind of sucks. It, it's only going to be happening in the films. I'm, as Pat's going to say, I'm going to be 52 by the time the... Green Lantern movie comes out, so whatevs. Yes, can I awesome. add? Can I add something? Yeah. I think Ezra Miller, through the pictures I'm looking at, he would be a great Nightwing. Plastic. He has the long black hair. He has that face. His body can be built up on. So it's it's really surprising to me that someone like this is going to end up being Barry. But you know, it is because I thought Scoot McNary was going to be Barry <laughs> and Batman be Superman. You I guess Jimmy he is going to definitely be Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on to the next one here, the other confirmed casting, and this has been rumored for a long time, of course, is Jason Momoa as Aquaman. Uh, you know, supposedly he had filmed a scene for Batman v Superman. They were going to have this scene with Aquaman in it. Um, but he's been shooting it down like crazy. I mean, every interview with Jason Momoa, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not Aquaman. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then today they confirmed it that he is going to be Aquaman. Aquaman will have his own movie in 2018. Um, this is interesting um, because this is going to be a summer film and it's fucking Aquaman. <laughs> Which, on one hand, I'm kind of like, it's fucking Aquaman. But, you know, I will say, you know, in the New 52 and everything else, I mean, the the new Aquaman is fucking badass. I, I struggle a little bit to picture Jason Momoa as Aquaman, just because, like, obviously he's not blonde and everything like that. And I'm sure they could always change up his look and everything. But, um, I, I'm... I don't know how I truly feel about it. Uh, I like Momoa. I think he's a good actor. He's obviously got the size. He's got the strength. Uh, he usually plays a villain. Um, but I, th- I think he'll make... I think the one of the main reasons they went with him is because he'll make Aquaman pretty fucking badass. <laughs> and he looks why. cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that's why they went with him. Because he's not just this pretty boy, blonde-haired you know, guy like Smallville did it. 
you know? Like, it's just like they went with a dude that's going to be gritty and hardcore and is going to be this badass king of Atlantis. So um, it'll be interesting. I'm very interested to see how Aquaman, like, plays into this whole picture, starting with Batman v Superman, into the Justice League movie, and then into his own solo film. Um, so, Fred, what's your thoughts on Momoa and Aquaman? So, the f- funny thing about my thoughts on Momoa and Aquaman, they're going to completely contradict exactly what I just said about The Flash. And so, my complaint with The Flash is the dude doesn't look anything like The Flash. Well, an Aquaman, I think what's going to make him work is the fact that he doesn't look anything like Aquaman. I mean... Like you guys were saying, he's this big, you know, buff dude. He looks mean and badass. And, like, when I think of, you know, like a a king who's going to command and, like, you know, lead an army and all that, like, he has that look, you know, call from, from Game of Thrones when he was on there. Like, um, I, I, I'm, I'm stoked. I mean... You know, I'm not a big Aquaman fan, as as we discussed in our who was the Justice League episode on on the People's Forum. Like, none of us are really you know too thrilled about Aquaman in general. But I have to say, like, you know, a big surprise for me is I really can't wait to see what they do with Aquaman in in this uh, in this series because I think here you have the opportunity to step away from the comic books in a positive way. Um, I think that's really rare. Um, you know, like I said, I just complained about that with the flash, but like in this instance, when you have a character who wears tight green pants and orange, you know, chain mail, I guess, you know, scales, like how do you get away from that to make him a likable, cool character that let's face it, like guys are going to want to see and be like, yeah, that guy's badass. He kicks ass. You know, I mean, you got to make him look that way. And I think Momo is the perfect person to do that. So this is the the rare instance where I'm actually really pumped to say, okay, we got a guy that doesn't look anything like the character, and I want to see a costume, you know, that maybe has hints to the to the original stuff, but I I, I don't necessarily want to see him running around in green pants and in an orange um, scales. Like let's let's see some kind of really cool looking um, armor or something like that. So I'm actually really excited for this one. It's going to be tight. And if you watched Entourage, you saw Aquaman was the biggest movie in the world. <laughs> the, oh, that's right. <laughs> number one box office film of all time. Aquaman directed by James Cameron. So, uh... <laughs> I missed that, that one. <laughs> that's true. Watch Entourage. <laughs> um, Geeky Pat, Aquaman, Jason Momoa, what you got? It's an interesting pick, really, because like he started his career on Baywatch. I mean, a lot of you guys don't remember that, but he started his career on Baywatch, and he had that Aquaman look then, except with dark hair. I mean, his body shape, all that worked out. He was in the water a lot. I can see why they, they thought of him when it came to that. And then again, he's the king, right? Drogo, he's, he's like the, the leader, so he has that aspect. They've seen him play those parts. And he was great in Conan, right? I mean... Uh, he was good. The movie sucked ass. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> eh. Um, eh. Man, <laughs> it was, that it was better than Lucy. Hey, no way. Ooh, <laughs> I like that. Take so it back. Tell me, you're telling me that it's as bad, it's worse than, 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 uh, than, uh, uh, what's that, that movie Ghost I walked Rider out on? Ghost Rider, Rider. too. Right? <laughs> no, nah, don't, Night Rider's awesome. Anyway, so, I mean, he's got history in this kind of role. I mean, swimming and being in the water and being with his shirt off and all that kind of good jazz. Um, uh, I don't think he's a bad pick, actually. He was one of the few picks that when they were like, Jason Momoa was going to be Aquaman, I was like, cool, I'm okay with that. I mean, he's a cool guy, he's, he's a great actor, um... I can just see it. I mean, all they have to do is dye his hair, I guess, because I, I don't... He has really dark hair. Although sometimes it's brown, and other times it's black, so I don't know. I guess he would dye it depending on the role, right? He I even think had, he's going to go blonde. I think they might do, like, a dirty blonde or something like that, but I don't think they're going to go straight blonde with him. I agree with tips. you, because they didn't blonde, they didn't blonde uh, Keanu Reeves when he was Constantine. So, yeah, I think... I agree with you, Don. I think yeah. it's going this natural. I think they might try to lighten it a little bit and like so i say like a dark dirty blonde but i think that's a, the lightest it'll go i don't think he's gonna be clean shaven either i think he's gonna be no. goatee goatee uh i think he's gonna have a beard <laughs> it's uh, gonna be Thor. Well, he has the beard in the in because he's older you're right you know that's something i'm not thinking about he could be the older version of aquaman 
um, more seasoned and have the gray in the beard and all that stuff like you see him in like some of the cartoons now and some of the comic books. So, nah, he's a great pick. I won't waste too much more time on it. All right. Peeps. Cool. Um, I mean, it's funny. We're sitting there bagging on the Flash because he doesn't really look like the character. And then, you know, kind of this guy looks absolutely nothing like Aquaman, Aquaman. But I think... You know, the same thing what they did with Johnny Storm. If you're going to change a character, completely change the character. And, you know, it, make Flash a black dude or, you know, just completely change it up. And, and what they're doing with, I, I don't know what Momoa is. He's Samoan maybe or something. I don't know. He's darker than the average guy. So it, it, <laughs> I, I like that. I don't know. It's, it's a different take on Aquaman. Aquaman isn't as fresh as he is in the comics. Maybe, you know, giving him a more exotic look will... Make it work on the big screen. I don't know. I'm I'm okay with it. Let's let's do it. All right. Well, next character, and this is this is one of the pieces that kind of made me scratch my head today. For like the last six months, we've been seeing The Rock go back and forth, hinting at who am I going to be? Who am I going to be? I'm going to be a superhero movie. Is it going to be Green Lantern? Is it going to be Shazam? What's it going to be? Okay, it's going to be Shazam. But am I going to be Shazam? Or am I going to be Black Adam? I don't know. We're going to see. I can't talk about it yet. And then about a month ago, they break the news. Boom. The Rock is going to be Black Adam in a Shazam movie. We're like, okay, cool. So my first initial reaction is, this movie's going to come out after Batman v Superman. It's going to come out in 2016. Um, and this is going to be one of the next DC films. Look at this slate. 2019. You're telling me they announced The Rock to say he's going to play this role in five years? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, I am scratching my head at the Shazam announcement. It's at the end of the list. Like, I don't know, man. So, like, that makes me feel that we're going to see Black Adam beforehand. I think he might actually be one of the bad guys in Justice League. Um, whether it be part one. Um, yeah, it'd have to be part one because part two is actually after Shazam. So I think he's going to pop up. I think he's going to be one of the bad guys in an earlier film because it seems way too premature to announce that The Rock is going to be in this film and then say that this movie ain't coming out to 2019. So... Fred, I'll start with you. What what do you think when it comes to the Shazam movie? I mean, don't you feel it's a little bit stretched? <laughs> I absolutely agree. The, the the timing that just doesn't add up at all. I think you're absolutely right with the fact that he's got to show up before the Shazam movie. I mean, why would you bother making this huge announcement for us to wait so many years before we're going to see him? Um, if if not in one of these slated movies. Maybe he pops up as a villain in one of like the Man of Steel, um, you know, two or something like that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just don't see it. It doesn't make any sense to to make this big, get this huge of an actor on board to have it so late. Now the the other side of that is it could be Rock's schedule. You know, um, Rock could have things all piled up for the next two years and they really couldn't work anything out until that time frame. So maybe that's a factor. But I just I just think that you know. Why call attention to it? Why sign somebody when you're not ready to, to, to use them? So, yeah, I, I'm thinking he's going to show up earlier and uh, we'll get get a nice appearance of, of The Rock laying the smack down on Superman. Yeah, it, it has to be. I mean, it's just that I don't think I've ever seen a casting call made out five years early. You know, and, and they did make such a big deal about this that, I mean, like I said, everybody assumed this was just going to be one of those early... Because, like I said... um. DC had already announced dates. They just didn't tell us what the movies were. So we knew there was a date, which and which the date that actually went to Suicide Squad is what everybody assumed was going to be Shazam. So it's just so crazy to me. So, Pat, I mean, what, what do you think with uh, The Rock and Shazam and, and being five years from now? What does Geeky Pat think? It doesn't matter what Geeky Pat thinks. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I had to do it. Uh, uh, I don't get it. Good moves. Just kidding. Come on, Sean. Even I got that one. <laughs> hey, that, was, that was during your time, Sean. You definitely had Yeah, it. I got it. I got it. That time. Uh, no, uh, I love The Rock, dude. He could have told me he was playing Superman. I probably would have somehow found my way into my heart to let him do it. So, yeah, no, I'm excited that he's going to be it. I, I just don't see him wasting the talent five years out. I mean, that's a long time to just assume he's going to be able to do it and be in shape and nothing's going to happen. I think they're going to want to... He's hot now. The iron's hot now. I mean, 
you're going to assume he's still going to be a superstar then. I mean, I hope he is. He's the most electrifying man in inter- sports entertainment. But I'm just saying, I don't, I don't, I don't see them wasting that right now. You know, I don't. I see them wanting to use him and and getting him in that role. You and me were talking about it when he was casted as Black Adam. We were both kind of worried because it was like that could be like a one and done kind of deal. We kind of don't want that, you know. That's how I feel. I feel. I feel like they're going to use him before that. I definitely, if not in Justice League One, uh, you know, I think he'll be in one of the other movies. Maybe he's the. I mean, he could be the bad guy in Wonder Woman for all we know. True. Yeah, he's he's got to pop up as the bad guy in one of these other films, and it would make sense too by the time you got to Shazam, just because Black Adam was around for so long. You know, so I mean, so that would you know you could set that up to be that he was around obviously before Shazam and kind of tie that all together when that movie rolls around. But he would be a good good bad guy for that. So, peeps, what's your thoughts on Shazam and The Rock in twenty nineteen? Well, I mean, it was kind of disappointing that he's not really going to be that anti hero that you were talking about. That was something I was kind of looking forward to. Hopefully, they still kind of go that way, that he route. Could be but in the Shazam movie, yeah. You know, you so, have him as a straight-up villain kind of in one of these earlier films, and then the anti-hero kind of team-up in the other one. Exactly. So that, that's what I would like to see. I mean, it sucks that Rock's not going to be Lobo, so that's that's all I have to add. <laughs> Tear! <laughs> well, I think for the most part, that pretty much sums up what we need to get into. Uh, I guess we'll wrap with the Justice League aspect of it, of what you guys want out of it. What do you think with two films being announced, literally one in 2017 and one in 2019? Um, you know, do you feel that the official lineup will be Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Aquaman, Cyborg, and possibly Green Lantern? Um, or if it'll, you know, if part one will be different from part two, or what um, or do you think we'll get out of these films? So, Fred, what, what's your thoughts with Justice League? Justice League, I think all the cast members that are, are all the characters rather that have been listed for single individual movies, I think that's going to be our Justice League. Um, why bother making these individual movies of these characters where when you're not going to utilize them for something so big? You know, you talked a little bit about you know mentioning you know uh, Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, and, and those are the only names that they're kind of dropping for stuff. Well, when you get a Fast and Furious, you know, five and Fast and Furious six. The only names you see on the press releases are Vin Diesel and Paul Walker. You don't get the the whole cast. Rest in peace. Exactly. Um, so, um, you know, I, I think that we're getting all these guys. I, I really can't see a Justice League movie without without them. Um, I know that, you know, there's a lot of iffiness with Green Lantern especially um, and, you know, even maybe Flash. But the thing is you're going to have these guys going up against huge villains. And in order to defeat these huge villains, you got to have every single one of them on board. we got Darkseid as a possibility. You know, they announced Brainiac um, as a possibility. So you, you can't take these guys on without every piece of the puzzle. And, um, you know, I, I have to admit that for myself, I was hoping for Darkseid first because I think Brainiac is a more interesting take. I think for... For what what made you know Avengers one very successful was the fact that we got to see all our favorite heroes just slug it out. You know they got to to go up against this horde of, of aliens and just you know shine all of them dropping their their powers and and letting loose and just letting it rip. And that's what I want to see in Justice League movie. I want to see Superman just you know flat out punch dark side in the face you know i want to see <laughs> that <laughs> batman taking out everybody flash you know taking on you know 30 guys in two seconds and you know i want to see everyone just letting it rip and although you could do that same thing with brainiac i mean he's still you know an alien kind of thing i think with, when you bring in brainiac you could bring in um you know a much deeper story much darker story um I do have a couple, you know, fears for the two Justice League movies, and that's with the fact that I hope that they don't mimic Marvel too much. You know, as much as I love the Marvel movies, I want to see DC, you know, maybe do something similar, but at the same respect, do something a little different. Like, you know, we we got to see the aliens attack and, and the Avengers hold hold off this this uh, horde of, of villains. So I want to see Justice League fight Darkseid. You know, that's one huge threat. We haven't got to see that with Thanos yet. So let let Justice League do that. What I don't want to see is Brainiac turn into um, 
uh, you know, Ultron. Uh, Ultron, we're going to have... Yeah, same thing. You know, you, right? I mean, you see yeah. the posters, there's going to be like a thousand little robots. Uh, I don't want to see that again in DC's version. Uh, as, as I mean, that would be cool, but what I'm getting at is, you know, I want to see our heroes shine, but I want to see them, you know, do their own thing. Yeah, you but know? you think you want to probably hold off on like a dark side, you know, to... He's going to be like their Thanos, so it's like you hold off on that and you pop him in... Justice League two or three, like and you kind of build to something like that. Well, I guess I see I Brainiac. They want to blow their top, like on the first. Time, <laughs> you know? I guess, in my opinion, I I kind of see Brainiac as being that that you know bigger threat because he's he's so dangerous in a different way. Like Brain, uh, Dark Side wants to just come in and smack you to the ground and take you over right then and there. But Brainiac is is like this, you know. There's so much more to him. I see him more yeah. of like you know a chess. Right, Sean? I mean, like, he like comes Like a world out. domination kind of, like, he completely destroy, like, or he takes over technology and just completely mess everything up for the entire Earth. Whereas, like you said, Darkseid could come down with his kung fu pants and then they just, they, you know, kung fu fight for, like, five minutes, five hours. Yeah, so, I mean, all that stuff would be awesome regardless. And, and either way, we're going to get some cool movies, I'm sure. Um, but... Uh, I just, you know, I, I kind of was hoping for, you know, Brainiac to be the next one. But uh, then again, you know, let, we'll see what happens. Uh, it's it's going to hopefully be cool either way. So, uh, but I'm excited. Good news. All right. Yiggy Pat, Justice League, one and two. What's your thoughts? Oh, yeah. No, I I, I feel like that it really was surprising in the, in the order it was because you and me were talking about it would be smart for Marvel to start off with like the Avengers and work its way back. I feel like they're kind of doing that a little bit with the way they're doing things. Um, I like the idea of actually having... To, I'm, I'm sorry, Fred. I know I've been doing this to you and Sean all night, but I'm kind of the okay. opposite. I'm, I'm really, I love you guys, so don't think I'm like dissing on you. But I really think Brainiac's who you want up front because Brainiac's one of those characters that never really goes away. Like, you think you destroyed him, but he likes hanging on to some particle of something, and then he grows into something bigger, you know? And, and I think there is going to be robotic minions. I think it maybe will be a little closer to the Avengers, but I don't know. Uh, I, I'm excited. Especially if there's going to be Green Lantern, I'm sold, right? Um, I don't think it's going to... I think Justice League 2, I know it says Part 2, and maybe Dawn's completely right, but I'm hoping that's when we get our dark side, our dark seed. But our dark side—that's what I call them. Some people call them dark seed. But uh, I, Brainiac is almost going to have to be the big version of Brainiac, the huge fleets of ships that are about to to absorb the data of this world kind of Brainiac, not the one character with the minion of robots. Does that make sense? He almost has to be the DC Comics Online Brainiac, you know, where there's just ships everywhere and you really don't know which one he's in. And I think it's got to be this larger-than-life thing and less like uh, of uh, Ultron kind of thing. That's all I have. Cool, cool. All right, peeps, what you got? Just so- like- First of all, Don, why why are you skipping the brother? I mean, Cyborg, like, we didn't spend no time on Cyborg, and his movie is extremely important. No, I'm yeah, just kidding. I, I was going to say, I don't even <laughs> I don't even know why they're even doing a Cyborg. I, I don't get it. But um, Justice League movie, um, you guys can find out all my thoughts on the Justice League core members. If you go to Red Dragons Radio, uh, check out my Who Are the Justice League. We're literally talking about this for probably... I think like an hour and a half about who's the, who's the Justice League and what we think they're going to do for the movie. Um, I, I, as I jumped in there with Fred, I would love to see them start with like a, um, you know, a, 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 a big fight between them, uh, Darkseid, and then all the Darkseid's minions from Apocalypse. Um, I know they're not going to do like a uh, Doomsday. They're probably going to save that for like a standalone Superman movie. Um, in terms of other really big DC villains, I don't know any others, in all honesty. Um, all the good Batman villains are going to be safe for the Batman movies. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's that's all I got. Faux show. Sure. <laughs> you know, I, I, I like the lineup, and the more and more I look at it, the more and more I think it kind of makes sense. You know, you, you come out the gate with your Batman v Superman. Those are your... 
those are your knights. <laughs> you know, that's what's going to carry this moving forward are those two characters. You know, you give Wonder Woman that big send-off on her solo film first because, like I said, they want to come out the gate. They want to show, DC wants to show, hey, we got our female superhero. Let the women come out and see a chick kick some ass. And they want to lay that groundwork. Then you got Justice League. You bring everyone together. And then you branch off to your smaller characters like Flash, Aquaman. You know, you then go to... Um, you know, I, I like the way they're breaking it apart. So you have your big hit, heavy hitters out the gate. Then you do Justice League. You get people in, in connected with the team and with everybody you got. Then you go into the solo films of a Flash and an Aquaman to where if you just came straight out the gate with a Flash or Aquaman, they might not do that good. But now you have that Justice League connection with them. So you're like, whoo, I want to see what's next for these characters. And you check that out. Then you get Justice League Part 2. So once again, you're connected to the whole group. You see how everything's advancing. And then you kind of wrap up with the two question marks. Number one being Cyborg. Not too many people know about Cyborg. I mean, it's just like most people about the Teen Titans and all that stuff are kind of getting into Cyborg. He could be really cool cinematically. I, I think he could be a very cool character to follow on the big screen. But he's a very big question mark. So by the time you launch his solo film, it's 2020. And you've already seen him a little bit in Batman v Superman. You've already seen him in Justice League 1. You've already seen him in Justice League 2. And for all we know, they could pull a Marvel and he could pop up in a little role in Flash. You know, or anything else. So that that I think is smart. Um, and then you wrap up with Green Lantern because, of course, they want to put Green Lantern, the farthest one at the end, to separate the distance from the Ryan Reynolds film. Because if they are truly rebooting it, once again, you introduce the character in Justice League. You bring him back again for Justice League 2. And then by the time he has his solo film, you've already seen this dude in two movies. You've grown a connection to it. And then now you have the solo Green Lantern film again done the proper way. So it really makes sense when you look at the slate and you see how it breaks down. You you see how they go boom, heavy hitters. Justice League, we're giving you everyone. Here's a couple of our other guys that may be a hit or may not be a hit to get more acquainted. Justice League 2, bring everyone back together, and then we wrap it up you know, in our, with our six-year slate here with the two characters that are the biggest question mark out of all of this, and we've already introduced you to them, and now we've built up, you know, that that watch for it. So I, I think it's a smart move. I love this slate, and uh, I'm excited, man. It's been a... It's, it, this was a good day <laughs> to, to see all of this stuff. So uh, final thoughts. Start with you, Fred. Final thoughts. Anything else you want to say on the, uh, this DC slate? Um, on the DC slate, no, just really... Sorry about that. I'm um, just really excited uh, to see, um, you know, these things finally getting announced. You know, we part of being a fan is being able to, to sit down and talk about this kind of stuff and speculate. That's some of the fun of, um, you know, enjoying these comic books and these movies. So, you know, I, I'm just really happy to see DC finally coming out and giving us what we wanted. And we wanted these names to these to, to these films and, and the slates it's been laid out in front of us. So now we're going to be talking about it for a long time. So just, just really excited to, to hear them come out and finally give us uh, what we've been wanting. All right. Geeky Pat, final thoughts. Um, I'm excited. I'm a big DC fan. So I've been excited ever since the new Superman movie, right? Um, the man of steel. I, I, I do. I like him. I like the idea of all these. Ge- I even like the idea of Cyborg. I think he is going to look cinematically great. I, you know, the thing is, is especially by twenty twenty. Yeah. Well, <laughs> my kid will be eighteen. We'll go see it together. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so wow. imagine the technology by this point. Yeah. Exactly. Cyborg. That's the good thing with Green Lantern. I didn't think about that. They'll be all three dimensional. Exactly. Anyway, um, <laughs> we're going to be watching that in five D. Yeah, five D. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, uh, it, it's exciting. One thing that I, I like the idea of is is they're going to show us right out the gate how any of these characters can really show up in any of these movies, including Suicide Squad, right? And so, 
I feel like maybe Green Lantern might be in the Flash movie. They're best friends in in the comic book. I feel like they would kind of tease that somewhere in my life. I don't remember where, but um, I kind of feel like there's some there's some connections that could be there and with with the schedule that I wasn't sure of, but now that I see the lineup, that these characters are going to be part of the same universe now. And as you would have asked me two days ago if I thought Green Lantern was even going to be introduced I thought they'd want to get so far away from the other Green Lantern movie that they wouldn't even put him in um, now I'm very excited and like I told you it's like in that one scene in Dumb and Dumber they're like you have like a, a, I have like a chance you know like there's a chance that Green Lantern's going to be in these movies and that's how I felt I mean I'm super stoked super stoked even even for Aquaman, and you that's kind of weird, right? Like, because, like, I'm not a big Aquaman fan, but I'm super stoked even for a, a standalone Aquaman. There's so much potential there, and the underwater scenes, and, 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 and whatever the fallout is from Justice League, or even all the way back to the Superman movie, you know, the, the, the uh, Man of Steel movie. There's so much potential for all this being together. And we don't even know what the fallout of the Suicide Squad is. We don't know what Amanda Waller is going to have him do. Maybe they accidentally create Cyborg. We don't know. I mean, it's just there's so much potential here, and I'm so excited about it. I just wish we could get it all next year so I don't have to wait till 2020. That would be something, right? <laughs> <laughs> I will say Aquaman is pretty damn badass and Injustice God's Among Us. So Yes, he is! He is the shit. Very true, very true. I love playing that dude in the game for sure <laughs> he yeah. is awesome all right peeps final thoughts right on um like pat you know the mirror what pat said i'm definitely looking forward to suicide squad um hoping it will be the guardians of the galaxy that kind of unknown gem that will just kind of blow everybody away and it, with that being the you know the second movie to come out to kind of you know kind of build up some momentum for the the rest of the DC movies that they have coming out so kind of get us a little bit more excited for them well to get me more excited for them um especially you know with the cast of Suicide Squad I really want to see Deathstroke I really want to see Harlequin um if those if one of those two makes it I'll be happy if neither of those two make it I I don't want anything to do with that movie um and um I I would I would have liked them to see the uh, when this was originally announced, I can't remember her name, but when she originally announced the uh, the leaked uh, lineup, there was a Green Lantern Flash movie, and I thought that would have been a really good idea. You know, you could kind of kill two really big birds, you know, with one stone, and I think you could you can do that in, in one film, especially if they're going to be already introduced in the Justice League movie. Why not do what how you're saying that they're doing in Captain America, but like print it as a, a, a duo, a, a movie with both of them, so it doesn't have to focus on either one more. Um, it can focus on them both equally, and then we enjoy seeing them both on the on the screens. And I thought that would have been fine, but didn't happen that way. So let's see what, what let's see what happens. Yeah, I'm 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 excited. There, you know, I I'm not against DC. You know, it, it's not a competition in terms of Marvel and DC. I love comic book characters. I love to see them on movies, and I'm just excited to see even more of this type of uh this movie type. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, excited, let's do it. Amen, um, it's definitely very, very exciting, it sucks that it's gonna take six years for us to get to the end of this, Uh. um, I mean, it's so far away, especially the fact that we're not really starting until 2016, and it's only 2014 right now, it kills me that Batman v Superman does not open next year like it was originally supposed to do, because they've been filming the movie for so long, too, and it's like, you hear about set photos and all these leaked images that are happening like during oh, the shooting and yeah. you're just like give me this film already <laughs> i want to see batman v superman so compared bad. to everything else 2015 is going to be slow compared to everything that comes after that <sighs> it's oh, yeah. come, on, Jeeps, come on i want to um real quickly kind of some other tied in kind of breaking news and, and stuff that's come out um, the head of Warner Brothers had also stated a lot of people have been wondering what kind of origin uh, is Wonder Woman going to have and it looks like they're going kind of the New 52 route where she is actually going to be a demigod and the daughter of Zeus so cool. that that is how they will be playing Wonder Woman in the uh, cinematic universe there's your Thor <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and the latest on the rumor mill Uh, because this keeps changing on a daily basis, but the latest on the rumor mill is Ryan Gosling for Doctor Strange. (laughs) 
<laughs> so yeah, it does change daily on your Twitter page. It changes daily. Now yeah, it's sometimes I want Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, you and McGregor. Yeah, was, was, I want you and McGregor too. Ewan I'm glad McGregor you said that. Was was rumored. Uh, Keanu Reeves was actually rumored yesterday. <laughs> um, you know, now Ryan Gosling know supposedly just just met with Marvel over the property. So. Uh, it's crazy, man. I st- I still would like Jared Leto to be honest. I think he would be a really really good fit. Or even Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch would be my follow up after. Oh, yeah. yeah, I would love Cumberbatch or Fred Higgins. One <laughs> I'd be happy <laughs> to to play that part. So there's a little bit of tidbits there for you. So all right, ladies and gentlemen, that will do it for us tonight. I want to uh, real quickly once again let you guys know part one. Uh, really for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Robert Downey Jr. joining Captain America 3, which will be out in 2016, in May of 2016, um, and possibly setting up the Civil War storyline. And of course, our second half of our conversation here, the DC Slate, starting from 2016 through 2020. Once again, that's Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice uh, in 2016, followed by The Suicide Squad. In 2017, Wonder Woman, followed by Justice League 1. Uh, Then in 2018, The Flash, starring Ezra Miller. And then Aquaman, starring Jason Momoa. In 2019, Shazam and Justice League 2. And in 2020, Cyborg, followed by Green Lantern. So... Ladies and gentlemen, that will do it for us tonight. Another big, massive episode here. Two hours in the books uh, as we do this special Am I Still in the Air? Like I said, you know, this news was dropping, and when just the Civil War stuff dropped alone on Monday, I was like, I should do an Am I Still in the Air on this. (laughs) And I was like, maybe. We'll see. And then when this DC shit dropped today, I was like, like I said, I was cast team assemble. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was just like, this was just too big within a couple days of each other. This really felt like the biggest movie news uh, of ever uh, for, especially for comic book fans to really hit. So um, this could not wait till Sunday and another exciting edition of am I on the air? So I had to <laughs> jump it, grab everybody together. And I want to thank uh, my team here tonight. So geeky Pat, of course, you can find him on RedDragonsRadio.com. He does a show called This Week with the Geek and another show called Out of the Riffs. You can follow him on Twitter at Geeky underscore Pat. Uh, anything else you want to shout out, Pat? Yeah, I want you to just ignore that altogether and just go listen to that great <laughs> new feature, Future Endeavors episode that came out. Yeah. It's where it all started. It, it, I'm, just, I'm so excited that you guys came back. Um, just go check that out, and then if you get some time, go check out you know the people's forum, and then if you get some time, then go listen to this week with the geek. Because I'll be waiting for you. I'm like that 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 comfy sweater at home. Just come home, put me on. So go over and check out those great shows too. Awesome, awesome. Uh, and then of course, yes. Yeah, so also on Red Dragons Radio, we have the People's Forum with my man Peeps right here. You can follow him on Twitter at four the number four my peoples. And uh, anything else you want to shout out, Peeps? Nah, man, you got it, and you know, appreciate for you having me on. This was uh, this is definitely news that we we had to we had to discuss because it was kind of killing me inside. <laughs> I know I broke it to you in the staircase on the way. In the <laughs> I know, I'm like, who does like, that? Hey. I have to get to work in like three <laughs> seconds, and you're I want to stop and talk. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> Couldn't let that one slide. And, of course, I'd like to thank my third guest. He's uh, a little shady on the uh, social media side, so I can't really tell you <laughs> to uh, follow him or check him out. But he is basically the co-host of uh, the Peeps <laughs> Forum, Mr. Fred, a.k.a. Lobster Johnson. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. We really appreciate it. Hey, I'm super excited to be on. Uh, I was, was su- so stoked when uh, you know Peeps was telling me that we were going to do this, and I saw the the tweet. I did look at the tweet. You know, it's, un- it's under construction. It's under construction. Lobster Johnson sixty nine without an H. Um, you know, so uh, yeah. Thanks so much for having me on. It's been awesome. Thanks. Red Dragons Radio, you know, for having Red all this going, um, you know, the People's Forum, and This Week with the Geek, which I've made uh, some appearances on each of those shows, so uh, thanks again, Don, really appreciate it. Of course, man, yeah, but when I was putting everybody together, I told Peeps, I said, you gotta get Fred on, man, we gotta get get everybody together to talk this one out, it's just too big, I wanted, I wanted everybody's insight, especially with everything going down, especially with Civil War and all that, so, 
Uh, I really appreciate you all coming on kind of last minute, but it was breaking news and we had to get it down. So um, thanks everybody for listening. I really appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter at DX Don Mega. You can follow the show on Twitter at Am I on the Air. Like us on Facebook at Am I on the Air, uh, Facebook.com slash Am I on the Air. And of course, Am I on the Air.com, iTunes, Stitcher, the whole nine. So you can find all the Am I Still on the Airs, Red Dragons Radio as well. So Red Dragons Radio is your hookup. You should be bookmarking that site. Follow it on Twitter at Red Dragons Radio so you always know what's going down in the world of podcasts. For Am I on the Air? Am I Still on the Air? Yes, Future Endeavors, the award-winning wrestling and MMA podcast that I am also a host of. Uh, the show retired back in February and we came back, surprise episode this past Sunday, three hours long. We killed it, and it was awesome to be back. So check out the new Future Endeavors. You can see This Week with the Geek, Out of the Rifts, People's Forum, uh, Pro Wrestling Nation, uh, the Brothers of Destruction podcast. I mean, there's a ton on there, reddragonsradio.com. Thanks so much for tuning in for Marvel Civil War and the DC Slate. We will catch you next time right here. Peace. I'm drinking. <laughs>